Thanks everyone for joining. I am Aaron Patzer. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO at uh, Vital. I guess previously I was the founder of Mint.com and the VP of product for Intuit. Um, with me, I have uh, Dr. Justin Schrager, uh, who is our chief medical officer and assistant professor at Emory University um, and a practicing emergency room doctor. Justin is on the front lines of this crisis um, almost every other day. Yeah. Thanks for having us, guys. I'm excited to talk to you. Um, at Vital, we typically build software for hospital emergency rooms, um, and we have two typical components. Um, it sits on top of any EHR, uh, Cerner, or Epic, um, pulls in all of the, the messages and data, um, and we have a bunch of AI models to predict probability of admission, time of admission for, uh, for bed control, uh, you can take notes in the system. Um, it'll automatically summarize uh, doctor's notes. And then we have a patient-facing component that allows self-triage in the waiting room to gather um, history of present illness um, and recent medical history, and then gives patients uh, real-time wait time updates. So it'll be an hour and a half before you get a bed. Um, your labs are gonna be back in two hours. This is what you should do when you're discharged. So it's a, something for patient uh, to improve patient satisfaction um, and to communicate with patients simply by using the messages that are flowing across your uh, EHR without you having to do something. Now that's not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about is c19check.com, um, which we built in collaboration with Emory and has had in the last four days, about 400,000 people screen themselves for COVID-19. Um, Dr. Schrager, do you want to tell us a little bit about how this came about? Yep. So much like the rest of you and certainly the presenters here, we wanted to do something uh, from a public health standpoint, using our software expertise to stem this outbreak flatten the curve, uh, <clears throat> make my job easier in the ER. <laughs> um, and uh, this was the best solution that we could think of. It's basically a concept called forward triage. You are preventing people from coming to the ER who don't need to be there. And you're stopping people from accessing the health system who don't need to be there. Uh, specifically, uh, surge mitigation. The whole point of this activity was surge mitigation. We partnered with a group that had developed a similar um, a similar tool with a website that uh, flu.gov and Microsoft hosted on their H1N1 response center during the swine flu 2009. Um, it had quite a few visits, but deployment and development was so slow that they actually got it out well after the uh, apex of that curve that you saw, or saw earlier. At least um, in the United States and most places, we're just kind of on, on the way up on that log normal curve. So the idea here was to um, repurpose the algorithm that had been developed almost 10 years ago and uh, put a uh, modern wrapper on it, send it out to the world and effectively go offline with medical recommendations. Now it's non-diagnostic, so it's not gonna tell you, yes, you have coronavirus, no, you don't have coronavirus. It will give you some likelihoods um, and more information about why that is. Uh, but the real service that it provides is that um, it basically allows people anywhere to go in there and, and log in and check their symptomatology and determine if they really truly need to go to the emergency department or even if they need to call their doctor or not. So um, Aaron's running you through it. It's incredibly simple, uh, although the back end is, oh, the back end's also simple, but it's uh, um, the science behind it is robust. It's been validated. Um, and uh, we Dr. have. Dr. Schrager, um, uh, it's worth mentioning that this was developed not only with infectious disease experts at um, Emory, but um, at the United Services University, um, which represents the armed forces with the U.S. Army. Um, it's gone through uh, two um, health literacy checks so that the questions that you saw that were being asked to patients, not is your BMI over 40, but do you wear size XXL clothes or larger for you know one of the pre-existing conditions? This is meant for consumers um, and is a very polished system. Now, uh, what we can do, uh, that's the science behind it. We've done IRB studies at Walter Reed and Emory before we, uh, before we launched this. Um, 
in addition to uh, triaging people as high, medium, low risk, uh, you can get uh, analytics out of the back end. Um, so you can get analytics on the zip code level for your region about where COVID is increasing or decreasing, at least from a self triage perspective, um, which is pretty fantastic. And you can uh, put this onto any website. So here's the one that we've publicly released. It's been used by about 400,000 people in the last four days. Um, here is a white label version where you can change the color scheme uh, as you see fit. Um, it will take your technical team no more than two hours to integrate this. It's a bit like embedding Google Maps onto your site, and this should be on every uh, public health website, every hospital website. Um, One other thing that we will mention is in addition to the C19 check and the ability to white label it, we are incorporating this into our primary um, patient communication product. So uh, as I mentioned, we have something that presents uh, patients with wait times while they're in the emergency room, it gives you the ability to send uh, little alerts to them. Uh, it's, it's a no download web app uh, sort of thing. We're extending that into something that we call Vital Light that does not require an EHR integration. This will be ready in two weeks. The C19 check uh, and the white label is, is ready now, today, if you want it. Uh, this version of Vital Light will let you put up a poster outside the emergency room, have people self triage, and then hold up their phone, and you'll be able to see are they green, yellow, or red? and what symptoms do they have? And you'll be able to see that from a distance of six feet uh, and bucket them accordingly um, based on procedures for the coronavirus. Uh, while they're in the emergency room, they're going to be getting effectively crowdsourced wait times uh, for each of the next steps. And they can share um, their journey through the emergency room with their friends and family. So they're sharing options to keep everybody informed, which is particularly important because visitors are no longer allowed in the emergency room. Again, there's no IT setup for this. Um, it'll be ready in two to three weeks um, and Vital Light with a simple contract can, uh, can be up in a day or two. Um, I think we we breezed through that, but for the technical <laughs> details of um, the coronavirus uh, checker, um, we can put it onto any website or portal, whether it's your homepage or whether it's your patient portal. You'll have access to analytics and dashboards. We'll match your color, your brand, your call to action, your logo. Um, once you're done uh, with the checker, we can link back to any site. Um, if you host this on a subdomain like coronavirus.yourhospital.com, um, that's even easier for us. Um, and we can handle all of the uh, hosting. Uh, we're on obviously a HIPAA compliant uh, platform. We're not gathering any PHI anyway, just a zip code to plot things. Um, and with that, um, with that subdomain, you'll have something that has an average load time of 120 milliseconds worldwide uh, because our tech is that solid. For those of you who remembered uh, President Trump uh, saying that Google built something to screen everybody for uh, coronavirus um, and then send them to test centers, Google did not build that screener, um, but we did. Um, and have actually been asked by uh, Google Verily to work with them in the state of Georgia as their uh, front end. Um, this has been covered in ABC, Fox, uh, Reuters, in the New York Times. Um, so go ahead and, and look it up, uh, try it for yourself. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. I don't have any time for questions at all. <laughs> uh, very, very impressive. Uh, Nate has been answering lots of questions and saw uh, yeah. in the chat. So um, uh, about the white labeling, the integration with the HR, all those things. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.